Alright guys, welcome back to F1 News. Formula 1 is finally back and many teams are bringing new upgrades this weekend to try and go a little bit faster. Aston Martin, a brand new rear wing design meant to help with their DRS effectiveness in a straight line. Red Bull, a couple of tweaks with them as well. And Mercedes with a rather surprising visual change to their diffuser. There's been a big talking point of the last couple of weeks in terms of development of the Red Bull. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Firstly on Ferrari then. Big topic later on Charles Leclerc, what's exactly going on at Ferrari. Updates as well on what's happened with Laura Mekis going over to Alfa Tauri and apparently Fred Vasseur wanted him to stay. So it's unclear whether Mekis wanted to leave and join Alfa Tauri as their new TP as he will be next year or whether he was forced out by Ferrari because that's what the rumour is according to Giuliano de Kessa. That according to Vigna. Now Vigna is in charge of Ferrari on a higher level than just um, the Formula 1 team but we know that within Ferrari the politics are kind of weird and the team principals don't have as much power as you'd think they have in terms of actually making the calls with regard to the F1 teams. Apparently, Vigna wanted him gone. Now, um, apparently also, Mekis wanted to be free of Ferrari. He long wanted to free himself despite Vasseur's words of esteem. So, a bit of a weird one to be honest. I know that Vasseur is probably now realising how tricky it is to be team principal at Ferrari given the politics games in play and despite the words recently that there are profound changes happening within the walls of Marinette. Maybe this is one of them, but um, this is the exact thing that Vasseur didn't want to happen when, you know, he wants to make the calls fundamentally who stays, who goes, but apparently it isn't always his wish. And even uh, Franz Toster, when he kind of the announcement a couple of days ago that he's stepping down, apparently that took Yuki Snowda and Nick DeVries by surprise. Pretty interesting just because there have been some rumours circulating whether Franz Toster has been not exactly forced out by the Red Bull ownership, but basically they've said to him, look, I think it's time for you to step away, bring in Mekis as the new team principal, bring in a brand new CEO and potentially set up that team away from the traditional Red Bull outfit so they can sell it on, is one of the arguments that's currently ongoing. Speaking of some of the rumours, Charles Leclerc has responded to what we talked about a few days ago, that it's an open secret that he's going to join Mercedes and that he gets asked the question if there have been any talk to Mercedes and he says, no, not yet, not for the moment, which I must admit is quite an interesting uh, little phrase in there. For now, I'm fully focused on Ferrari, I fully trust the project. Yeah, okay, I'm sure I'm confident for the future, then we will see. I'm committed to Ferrari and I love Ferrari. So, you know, PR Leclerc's done it again. But I must say, you know, a bit of a, maybe a not exactly a Freudian slip here, but it's interesting that he says, not yet at least, will I be considering moves elsewhere? And kind of to sum up Ferrari's situation with Leclerc, he was asked the question about a potential musical collaboration with Hamilton. And he says, yeah, that'd be cool if Lewis is singing, but I don't know if he wants to sing a depression song. So apparently whatever Charlie's going to write in the future or whatever songs he's going to record, are um, maybe indicative of his current experiences. Also, Fred Vasseur, for probably the first time, I think, since he's taken charge at Ferrari, has made it quite clear that Leclerc is potentially his number one guy. And this might well be key to keeping Leclerc around in the medium to long term. But as Vasseur says, he is clearly part of the project and every single team, you always build around a driver. Lewis at Mercedes, Michael at Ferrari, Michael Schumacher, Alonso at Renault, Verstappen at Red Bull at the moment, Vettel at Red Bull, for example. Plenty of examples about this over history and um, the Sir is effectively saying that Leclerc is his Lewis Michael Alonso for his respective team. Now that is a uh, you know Sainz might not be so happy to hear this, Santander might not be so happy to hear this but fundamentally this is probably a necessity for Ferrari especially to keep Leclerc around like he wants to believe that he is going to be the full focus point of their team. We know last year there was a fair few strategy calls, Silverstone as one great example of when his race was compromised by strategy so, you know, we'll see what happens there. But I think it's the first time really that Vasseur has said anything outright about this. And maybe that is just indicative of further changes happening within the walls of Maranello, as they like to say. Also, Alonso made a couple of comments on the whole Taylor Swift and that he's dating Taylor Swift rumours. And he says, oh, look, I have nothing to say. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. And he made this face. So I think he's just trolling, right? But I mean, the journalists just simply can't help themselves. Another big update is the DRS zone in Baku. Of course, we know full well down the main straight in Baku, the DRS zone is a rather big deal. It has been shortened this year by 100 metres. So it used to reside, the DRS um, opening zone, about 350 metres 
kilometers further down from turn 20, which isn't really a turn, but it's classified as a turn. And now it's 100 meters further down. So you can actually see the length of the DRS zone into turn one and into turn three is pretty much the same. So, okay, this is 100 meters shorter. Should it make overtaking a little bit more challenging in the straight line, which is probably a good thing because last year it was a little bit maybe too easy, you could say. And there also is, what, 2.2 kilometers of pretty much flat out running down to turn one anyway, where the slipstream is very powerful, especially coming out of turn 19. And we might see now a little bit more battling going into turn one and then setting up a move into turn three, kind of like what's happened in the past at Brazil when you set up the move into turn one and get it done into turn four. So we'll see if uh, that happens here. On a little bit more of a regular basis, let's talk upgrades then. Here we go, the brand new Mercedes W14 concept. It's not going to be this van, but it is going to look rather like this. So nothing on the outside is changing too much this weekend. I didn't really expect to see any visual changes to the Mercedes. We heard rumors that there's going to be some suspension tweaks, but there actually is a visual change we'll get to here in a second on the diffuser of the car. Also must be noted, the teams are stacking up front wings for this weekend because there's quali, there is the sprint race, and then there's the actual Grand Prix, which is definitely ripe for incidents and potential chaos to occur. I think we will see some incidents this weekend. It'll be very surprising if we didn't. Ferrari have four front wings ready to go. Mercedes have got five in front of their garage. So just in case anything goes wrong, they've got plenty in reserve here. I mean, this is not even, maybe there's even more than five. So yeah, I don't know. They're being very careful indeed, Mercedes, and you can understand why given the weekends. Here are some of the changes then we are seeing. This is a new rear wing, it seems, for Haas. This has got to be like the flattest rear wing I've seen. It looks like the rear wings that the Indy cars use in Indy 500. There's barely anything on this, to be honest, in terms of a scoop on the rear wing. It's far from the barn door we've seen on other cars last season. And the DRS, this is the thing with DRS, right, is that it becomes more effective the higher downforce rear wing you are running. So, I mean, Haas aren't going to gain too much from their DRS, you would imagine, given it's this flat. But still, that's the rear wing they're going to run. You can understand it. They want to maximize their straight line speed. And actually, the Haas has been pretty good in a straight line so far this season. It's up there with the Red Bull and the Williams, kind of in terms of fastest cars in a straight line. These are the changes to the McLaren, generally on the floor here. Just some changes here between what we see on Australia at the bottom and what we see in Baku at the top. Few tweaks they're making. There's probably more significant things under the floor of the car. And fundamentally, the most important elements of the floor are usually the Venturi tunnels under the floor that you barely ever get to see unless the car crashes and has to be lifted off with a crane and then you get all the pictures. But um, until that may or may not happen, this is all we have to go off. And um, yeah, some tweaks here. I think basically Lando Norris said it's not going to probably make a major difference to their straight line speed or anything, but maybe in the corners, the circuit like Monaco, they might be marginally more competitive. But this is meant to be their big upgrade ride. McLaren promised us before the season began they'd have a big upgrade here for Baku. And well, here it is on the floor and it doesn't really look anything spectacular. So I guess we'll see how it actually operates because what it looks like doesn't necessarily indicate performance because often performance is, you know, implied by such small tweaks on the car. Also, the big change here for the Aston Martin, this is the advantage that they have with such a massive, not development budget necessarily, but in terms of wind tunnel testing time, they have more than any other of the top contenders this season and they are going to use it to good effect. So a brand new rear wing they bring in here with more optimized low to medium downforce kind of specification, much more efficient than the Jetta version with the DRS open. So this is, um, you know, their intention here this weekend because their DRS percentage kind of benefit has been the lowest of any team and also their straight line speed has been the lowest of any team without DRS. I think even with DRS as well, that still applies. So they need upgrades on that front and if they want to compete around Baku, that's certainly going to have to be the case. So brand new rear wing here for the Aston Martin this weekend that will hopefully help them in a straight line and actually allow them to compete with some of the other front runners. Also Alpine, another lower downforce rear wing with a shorter cord main plane. I think we also saw Ferrari have gone away again from this single kind of, um, you know, model here to once again the double model which keeps it attached. I think they tried the single one back in Bahrain and it was flexing around all over the shop. So they've gone again back to the double one which doesn't necessarily look so good for them. The only real changes we've seen on the Red Bull, this is comparing Australia to Azerbaijan and we can see the inlet for the side pod has been moved up somewhat and it's slightly shallower than it was before. The side pod is, um, you know, the, the undercut on this side pod is very intense from the, from the Red Bull side but it's even more intense now it seems with um, you know the changes between the upper is the older version and the lower is the newer version. So this is pretty much the only tweak that's been seen on the Red Bull so far. We were expecting a little bit more change I think to the Red Bull but this is the main thing that we have noticed. The rumor had it 
a couple of weeks ago that the upgrade they were going to bring here, Red Bull, was worth two tenths of a second. So we'll see if any other teams can close the gap or whether it's going to sustain as it was or even get bigger compared to the opposition given the nature of this particular circuit. And Max Verstappen also said every weekend there are always little things on the car that you put on, changes that you can make. It's no different here. We're bringing a few new things, little bits to try and improve the performance. And that's the Red Bull side, but also the Mercedes side. And um, yeah, a few new images here from Albert Fabrega. I was expecting nothing visual, right? We talked about the suspension changes they might make, which would be not visible to the naked eye looking at these images. But there is indeed a change to the diffuser here. If you guys look at the diffuser section on the bottom of the car, you can compare the Baku version to the Australian version and see some slight differences. Now, this is nothing major. As you guys can see here in Australia, there's um, the kind of like one cutout element of the right side of the diffuser and also the left side. Now, there's a couple of different, a little bit more complicated on this section here on the diffuser of the car. So this has been a big talking point for Red Bull as to how their, like their diffuser works so effectively when combined with the DRS that they're able to dump so much downforce and generate so much more straight line speed performance. This might be a small thing Mercedes are trying. I don't think this is, a, and it also just might be one kind of tweak that they decided to make when they do bring the big upgrade in a few races time that they believe is going to help them. But the regulations, okay, the cars look very different across the grid, but fundamentally the regulations are relatively restrictive. So even small changes can make big differences. And of course, we might see that on any of the cars that we have mentioned so far. Also on the Mercedes, they've got this new rear wing, or maybe this isn't brand new, but this is the design they're running with, at least kind of a medium downfall setup, not um, completely low. I think we've seen the last race, especially when it was George Russell who ran an actual higher downforce version than Hamilton did. So Russell was losing a couple of tenths in a straight line per lap, but he was getting that back in the corners. So there is a debate to be had here for Mercedes what they do, because if they expect to be running in the Grand Prix in the kind of second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, whatever positions, then maybe having the higher downforce version maintain the tyres better. And if you're in DRS anyway, then you're more effective with the DRS open with the higher downforce or slightly higher downforce, medium downforce version, let's say, than a completely flat one like Cass. So it is a decision to be made. Obviously, I've got to point out this in the background here, which is what Mercedes left up on what looks like a computer screen. Now, whether this is an intentional leak from Mercedes, I don't know. On what is clearly the W14, it's got no wheels on or anything here. So I'm not exactly sure whether we're looking from the underside at the floor, but given the shape of the wings, it looks like we are looking from top down on the car. And whether there's any additional detailing here, you can see whether this might be a version of the new philosophy they're going with, I don't know. But I don't know whether they've leaked anything here and if anyone could enhance this image to be better quality because it might well prove to be something. And these are just some images of the rear wings from the rest of the panic. So good to have Formula One back. Good to have Albert once again hitting it off with all of these uh, rear wing analyses at the start of the weekend. Hamilton also gave his thoughts on the upgrades that are coming. I think it will still be the start of a new path for us. It will be at the core the same car, but part of the path to getting us where we want to be. We're not going to hit the ground and be where we wanted to be at the start of the season. We're not making up that crazy ground that there is, but I think it's really positive. So much great work being done back at the factory. It's going to take time to progress in the right direction. So he's not expecting immediately to be able to challenge Red Bull over the next few races. So a little bit of uh, maybe realism or pessimism, whatever you want to say from Hamilton. But there's been so much optimism coming out of the Mercedes camp over the last few weeks that probably tempering it with a bit of realism is a wise decision. So there we go. Those are the upgrades we know about and what we can expect for this weekend. Very much intrigued here. Your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.